In this lab, I want to take a look at how to use a worm gear joint. So the worm gear joints are in the rolling joints category. So let's look and see what this does. So in this case, I have a worm with a single start or a single thread going around. And I have a gear with 40 teeth on it. So this would have to rotate 40 times in order to rotate this gear one time. We'll go ahead and let it play for five seconds. So we see that as this gear rotates this one rotates 1 40th of the rotation of this one if I wanted to change a direction I could also change a direction so let's look at how to set this up I'm going to start a new metric assembly file and so I'll do new I'll select the metric standard millimeter IAM I'll go ahead and save this and I'm going to call this worm joint then on the design tab, I'm going to select underneath spur gear, I'll select the worm gear. And I'm going to leave this on the settings for 40 as the gear ratio, 4 as the modulus, 20 degree pressure angle, uh, the helix angle, I'll leave that on the default. Number of threads on the worm is one thread on the worm at 60 millimeter length, 40 teeth on the gear, face width 20 millimeters, uh, so forth. If you want to see a preview of all the nomenclature so here are the the various parameters for the worm and the parameters for the gear all right I'll go ahead and say okay to that and I'll click someplace on the screen let's make a few edits to these two parts so I'm going to drill down in the design accelerator subassembly and I'm going to open up the worm and I'll go around to the right side view and I'm going to create a new sketch on the YZ plane and I'll draw a circle at the origin and let's say make this 15 millimeters in diameter and then I'm going to do a center point rectangle now you may need to hit F7 for slice graphics to see through this depending on how you have your sketch profile set up. So I'm going to dimension from here to here. I'll do that as 20 millimeters and I'll do this width. I'll do that as 8 millimeters. And then I'm going to do an extrude. I'll select both the circle and the rectangle and I'm going to go symmetric through all and I want to put a cut. Okay, so I just cut that through. I'm going to change the color of this to yellow. You can use whatever color you like and save that. And I'm going to turn on the visibility of the axis going through the middle of the part. In this case it is the x-axis going through the middle of the part. And I'm also going to come over here to where it says pitch diameter. I'm going to right click and turn on the visibility of this pitch diameter surface. Now we may not use this in this lab but in future labs we will be using this pitch diameter as an important parameter. All right I'll save this again and then I'll go back to the assembly and I'll open up the worm gear and I'll start a new sketch on the XY plane and I'll draw a circle. Now this is just for cosmetic purposes to make it easy to see what we're doing. Do that as 75 and I'll do a center point rectangle. You know, dimension that height say is 95 and I'll dimension this width as say is 38. Now I'll do an extrude cut through all both directions. So I'll select a circle, select a rectangle. I'll tell it to go through both directions symmetrically through all and cut. Right, I will turn on the visibility of the axis going through the center of this part and I'll also turn on the pitch diameter and then I will make this part a different color. I'll save this. Now I'm going to go to this pitch diameter and I'm going to edit this sketch and I see this value 160 for the pitch diameter and I see that it is given the variable name DA underscore DW. This was rounded off nicely to a simple even number 160 but sometimes we'll need this out to as many decimal places as it goes in this case we won't have to worry about it it's a nice even 160 all right I also need to know the distance from here to here and so I will go to the inspection tab and I do measure and I'm going to set my precision up to eight decimal places and I'm going to measure the distance from this axis to this axis and I see that's one 100 millimeters. Now again sometimes that will be a number that isn't a nice even number in which case we will have to use a calculation to get the 
exact number. In this case, it'll be easy. All right, so I'm going to turn on the visibility of the XZ plane, and I'm going to offset that up, that 100 millimeters. So I'm going to create a new plane, and I'm going to offset it off of, and I need to make sure it's the assembly plane, not the part plane. I'm going to offset that up a difference of 100 millimeters, and then I want to locate these parts in space. So they may be grounded. So if I come over here and I see that that subassembly is grounded, so I, I need to unground that subassembly, and then I'll do constrain between the plane of the assembly and this axis and I'll say apply to that. All right, then I want this worm to stay in the middle of the assembly, so I'm going to put this on flush, and I'm going to select the YZ plane of the assembly and the YZ plane of the, of the worm, and that'll move that back into position. I also need to constrain the axis of this worm to the XY plane. So I'll do constrain the XY plane of the assembly. Make sure you pick it of the assembly. And I will select this axis. And now this has only one degree of freedom. It can rotate. Now I'm not going to rotate this just yet until I get this one constrained. All right, I'm going to do the same sort of thing up here. So I'll go to the worm gear and I'm going to constrain the offset plane to this axis of this gear. And then I'm going to put it on flush and I'm going to get the XY plane of the worm gear and constrain that flush to the XY plane of the assembly. And then I'm going to constrain this axis. I'll put that back on mate. I'm going to constrain that axis to the YZ plane of the assembly. So now this has one degree of freedom rotation around this axis. This has one degree of freedom rotation around this axis. Because this is a subassembly, in order to move it, I need to make this subassembly flexible. If I try to move right now, nothing moves. So I'm going to right click on this and I'll set flexible. And now when I move this, we see that the worm rotates. So if I move the worm, we see the gear rotates. And the ratio was automatically created when we use the design accelerator to create these components. I'm going to turn off the visibility of this work plane, and I'll turn off the visibility of this work plane. We'll save the file, and then next we'll go into dynamic simulation. I need to make sure that this subassembly is set on flexible, and I can tell that it's flexible with this symbol right here. Otherwise, it won't move unless we have it on flexible. Now maybe we want to move this on its own. We want to drive it on its own just to test out the kinematic. So I'm going to expand the worm and I'll find the XY plane of the worm and I'm going to constrain that as an angle constraint to the XY plane of the assembly. And I'm going to name that drive this. And then to make that motion active, I will go to the Relationships folder. I'll right click on Drive This and I'll select Drive. And I'll tell it to go 40 times 360. And if 40 teeth on here, I need to revolve it 40 times times 360. I could put it how many degrees that I want to calculate per step. I'll just leave it on the default and I'll say OK to that. And so it has to rotate 40 times. If I increase the number of steps, I'll say increase that to 10 degrees then it'll play faster. So that is just driving the assembly constraint. Now before I go to dynamic simulation I need to suppress this or it won't move so I'll do suppress and then I will go to dynamic simulation. It tells me that it's over constrained and if I come over here I was expecting to have one revolution joint here and one revolution joint up here but I see I have this spherical joint. If I right click to delete that or suppress it I see that delete or suppress are grayed out. So in order to delete that I go to simulation settings, uncheck automatically convert constraints to joints but I want to maintain those joints. I'll say yes and OK. Now I can delete that spherical joint. All right, then I need to put in the screw joint. So I'll go to the rolling joint. I'll select the worm gear joint. Now in later labs, we'll always select these pitch diameters, and that's why I made those visible. On this lab, it's not going to make a difference, but I'll select the circle on the edge of this pitch diameter. And notice it says to select the gear and then the screw. So you have to pay attention to the order. And then I'll select the screw and select that circle on the edge of it. Now normally it will automatically turn 
determine the ratio between those two circles. In this particular one though that, that doesn't work but later labs we'll see how to make that work. All right now remember that the diameter of this pitch circle is 160. I'm going to put in for the pitch I'll do 160 times pi and that gives us the circumference of that circle and then divided by 40. There are 40 teeth in this gear. We'll say okay to that and then when I try to move this it may move the wrong direction so I'm gonna uh, go back to where I started so I'll undo that and then I'll go to that rolling joint. I can right click and either do edit or go to properties. I'll just go to properties and I'll go to the parameters and I'll put a minus symbol in front of that 160 and now when I drag this the gears go in the correct direction and then if I want to play that under the simulation player I'll go to the revolution joint for the worm I'll go to the properties one degree of freedom rotational I'll go to edit and pose motion I'll enable it and I could put in the input grapher if I want to go in different directions or different velocities but I'm going to do a constant velocity and I'll do 360 degrees per second I'll tell it to play for 40 seconds and we'll go ahead and I'm going to turn off those pitch diameters so I'll go to the view tab object visibility I'll turn off the construction surfaces and we'll play this and so we see as the worm rotates the gear rotates 